Hello, my name is Bernice Bos, and today I will tell you about the research we performed regarding chronic urinary retention in male patients in Isan Hospital in the Netherlands. I have no potential conflict of interest to report. Chronic urinary retention is a common condition in men and increases with age. The ICS defines chronic urinary retention. However, no validation of a clinically relevant post-void residual PVR defining chronic urinary retention is available. Recently, a categorization according to symptomology and complication risk was suggested. The aim of this study was to analyze the patient's pathway of men with chronic urinary retention by exploring the different treatments patients received from the urologist and the related complications of these treatments. For this retrospective single center study, we included male patients with non-neurogenic urinary retention with a PVR larger than 150 milliliters for at least four months who started treatment in 2014. We analyzed all hospital contacts recorded in the electronic patient records during the follow-up period which began at the date of the first treatment in 2014 and ended in September 2020. From the hospital contact, we included the different treatment steps and the related complications of these treatments. Curative intended treatments were deobstructive prostate surgery, mostly transurethral resection of the prostate, TERP, or laser TERP, or sacral neuromodulation. Palliative options were clean intermittent catheterization, a ureteral catheter, a suprapubic catheter, or watchful waiting. Complications were classified by origin, such as infectious, hematuria, catheter-related pain, catheter problems, and postrenal problems. 177 patients were included with a median age of 77 years. A third of the patients had diabetes mellitus, of which 41% was insulin dependent. A substantial part used medication, alpha blockers and or 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. The mean IPSS score was 17 with a quality of life score of 3. Almost half of the patients had a flow mate 3 with a median maximum flow rate of 7.2 and a median PVR of more than 150 milliliters. The patients had a median follow-up of 68 months, during which they had a median of 8 hospital contacts. 50 patients were treated with a curative intent. One patient received sacral neuromodulation in another hospital, and 49 patients had deobstructive surgery of the prostate. One third of these patients could stop catheterization. Comparing this to patients who did not have surgery, only 6% of these patients could stop catheterization. Patients treated with deobstructive prostate surgery had an odd ratio of 4 to end in a watchful waiting group. In the 30 days after prostate surgery, 36 complications were recorded. The most common were urinary tract infection and hematuria. Other complications included seven patients with frequency, urgency or urge incontinence and one patient with a bladder perforation. The first and last treatment steps are displayed in figure 1. Patients had a median of three treatment steps until final treatment was attained. Most patients had a urethral catheter as first treatment and a form of catheterization as last treatment. The complications of catheterization and watchful waiting are presented in Table 2 as incidence rate. It can be explained as the average number of complications per patient per year. Catheterization gives a significantly higher chance of urinary tract infection with an incidence rate ratio of about 3.5, meaning the chance is 3.5 times bigger to get a UTI when using catheterization compared to watchful waiting. Furthermore, catheterization gives a significantly higher chance of hematuria with an incidence rate ratio of more than 5. On the other hand, patients in the watchful waiting group 
have a much higher chance of post-renal problems compared to catheterization, with an incident rate ratio of about 25. However, most post-renal problems, 89%, were already present at the start of the first treatment in this group of patients. When comparing different forms of catheterization, clean intermittent catheterization has a significantly lower incidence rate for urinary tract infections, catheter problems and catheter pain compared to a urethral catheter and a suprapubic catheter. In conclusion, most male patients with chronic urinary retention were treated with a form of catheterization. These patients experience significant burden because of complications such as urinary tract infections, hematuria, catheter problems and pain. In some patients, the burden of catheterization may be avoided by treating the underlying cause of the urinary retention, such as bladder outlet obstruction and or detrusor underactivity. In our study, 33% of the patients who had deobstructive prostate surgery could stop catheterization. It demonstrates that for male patients with chronic urinary retention, clean intermittent catheterization is the most favorable form of catheterization since it has the lowest complication rate. And the deobstructive prostate surgery increases the likelihood of patients transitioning to watchful waiting indicating that there's an argument for patients to be offered this option. Thank you for your attention. If you have any notes or questions, please feel free to write them in the comment section below. Thank you.